everybody and I welcome all of you to online study for you. So in this video we are going to discuss the Infosys exam question paper that was given on the 28th of September of 2020. So Infosys has conducted a hiring exam for the 2021 batch students. So most of our students have attended this exam and it had consisted various uh, sections verbal ability, English ability, aptitude and pseudocode etc. So Pratik sir has covered the aptitude and has done the analysis as well. So in this video we are going to take a look at the pseudocode questions that were given. Okay, so these are given to us by students and we are solving these questions for you guys for the upcoming exams to see how the questions were there. So on the first hand what I would say is the questions were actually easy questions but the way these questions were given was the questions were lengthy and they had spin the questions spin the question sentences such that students will feel that the question is very difficult okay so let us go ahead and actually take a look at the question so the first question goes like this Consider the given problem statement. Okay, so this is the problem statement. Uh, what does this say? Find the closest pair of points in an array of distinct points. Okay, assume that you will solve this problem by comparing all pairs of points. What will be the complexity of this approach? is that they are asking so option a is o of n option b is o of n square option c is cannot be determined and option d is o of n log n now what is the problem statement here first we need to know or understand what is the problem statement what are we trying to solve and then we can analyze the complexity so what is the problem statement? So they have given this the closest pair of points in an array of distinct points. That means that let us suppose you have a x and y axis. Okay. You have a x and y axis like this. So here what it is, is there are some points. Okay. This is the x axis. This is the y axis. This is the negative x axis. Maybe you can also take negative y axis as well. So there are some points here. Okay. So you have to find one pair of points that are actually the closest okay so these two points are clo very close to each other you have to find this pair of points okay distinct point they have said that means that no two points will be same points okay so the points will be distinct you have to find the closest points i hope you understood this now how will be the input for this problem that you need to understand before I know understanding how to solve the complexity for this let us suppose we will have a two dimensional array okay let us suppose we will have a uh, array called P and this array will have a pair of X and Y of points like this okay so this will be X1 Y1 X2 Y2 okay X3 Y3 it will be like this and so on okay so what that actually is i hope you understood now okay so let us suppose there is a point here this is the x and this is the y value of this point so for every point the x and y value are given it may be positive negative or whatever it is so what you have to find you have to find the points let us suppose these two points they are very close to each other let us suppose this is point x this is point y these two are very close to each other you have to find which is the closest point so how do you do that is you have to find the distance between these two pro points Okay, you have to find the distance between the two points. How do you find the distance between each two point? Let us suppose you have x1, y1 point. Okay, and you have another x2, y2 point. Finding the distance between that is nothing but sum of the square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. This is mathematics. Okay, let us not worry about all this. Okay, this is you need to know this whenever you go ahead and read this sentence this these all things what i explained should come in your mind next what we have to do is we have to go further and analyze the algorithm so now what you need to do is you need to read the next sentence assume that you solve this problem by comparing all pairs of points so what actually you're doing is let us suppose we have 5 comma 3 9 comma 4 
15 comma 23 19 comma 14 let us suppose let us we, uh, we have these many points so what you are doing is you are first you are finding the distance between these two next you are finding the distance between these two next is the distance between these two next you are finding the distance between these two next you're finding the distance between these two so every so you will have two for loops to do this right so you're comparing each and everything this is very similar to in sorting algorithms if you know sorting algorithm if you know bubble sort there also what you do is you compare every single element and you sort it here what we're doing is we're comparing every single element and you're finding the distance that's it the difference okay so what is the complexity of this problem the complexity of the problem will be O of n square. The reason will be because you will have two for loops. One for a is equal to 0 and up to n. And you will have another for loop in the quotes for j is equal to maybe i to n. Okay. This will compare every pair of points. Okay. That is why the answer for this is O of n square. Okay. So another trick is you don't need to know all this by just reading this statement okay so by just reading this statement comparing all the pairs of points okay you will come to know that you're comparing each and every single point in the array and that is why your complexity will be o of n square you will understand that okay so let us move on to the next question so this is the second question before moving on to the second question we have a quick announcement we have a infosys pseudo code course so if you go to our website online study for you dot in and go to the premium video materials you can see here there is infosys one day cracker course which consists of 66 plus videos where you can buy it for 249 rupees and you can watch this course okay this is a very good course if you want to prepare for infosys right now the pseudo code one okay so let us get back to the question solving so uh, let us read the question first so class a contains two methods namely me and c class b inherits class a and overrides the c method class c also inherits class a now class b and class c both are inherited by class b using the concept of multiple inheritance now in the given scenario identify the problem generated by the behavior of the c method so the given options are option a coherence problem option b dexterity problem option c diamond problem and option d cohesion problem now what are they saying here they are saying that there is one class okay there is one class called class a which has two functions one function is called me and it has something and another function is called c okay there are two functions now what happens is there is another class class b which inherits from class a okay that means this class b will get the me function and c function as well so there is something called as overriding function overriding i hope you know that what is that is i'm not going to explain that it overrides the c function and defines its own method for class b there is also class c which as shown here class c what it does it also inherits from class a so what happens class c will also get the me function this me function and class c will also get the c function that is this c function it is not overriding it next what happens is interesting next what happened is next class b uh, both class b and class c are inherited by class b that means what happened is you had another class called d which inherits class b and class c both now what happens is a problem is going to arise okay so what is the problem is that they are asking so let us suppose this is class a let us draw this okay if you draw this you will come to know the answer now class B is inherited from class A and class C is also inherited from class A right next what we have is next we have class D 
which is inherited from both class B and class C. This is called as multiple inheritance. This multiple inheritance is available only in C++. It is not available in Java, although Java is object oriented programming language. Now, what is the shape of this? This is the diamond shape. Okay, that is why this problem is called as the diamond problem. Okay, now what problem is happening here? We need to understand that. Okay, not only just answering the question, you need to know the concept. Now, what problem is ari arising here? Is that see here? Class A has what methods? Me and C method, right? Class B will also have the me method and C method. Although this class B has its own overridden method, no problem. Class C will also again get the me method and the C method. Now, since class D inherits from both class B and class C, it will have two copies of class uh, this me function and C function, one from B and one from C. This will create a problem or this will create one error that error is known as the diamond problem. Now what, what me function will the class use? See here what happens is this class, this C function is different from this C function, that this C function. Because this C function was transferred here. But here this was the overridden method. Now the definition of this function will be different. Now which definition will this B use? Because they have the same function name. Right? So this will create an error. That is why because of this diamond problem, Java will not support multiple inheritance. Java creators said that we will not use this concept at all. Okay, to solve this problem. So the answer for this question is diamond problem here. To solve this problem in C++, they created one method. Okay, I'll just introduce you about it. I'll not explain how that method works, why it works and all. So they created a method, uh, concept called as virtual inheritance. Okay, so what do you do in this virtual inheritance? I'll tell you here. So the answer is diamond problem. You created class A okay while creating class B and while creating class C from class A here you are inheriting right so this will have the me function this will have the C function now whenever you are creating these here you mention using a virtual keyword okay you say this this is a virtual inheritance Say for example like this, Cla vir class virtual class C inherits class A, okay? That is how you mention this. Syntax may be different, but this is the concept, okay? So you mention the using the keyword virtual. Then you inherit D from B, C, what virtual keyword does is, it will only keep one copy, okay, using a V table, that is a virtual table, that is the, you know, more implementation of this virtual inheritance, but this will solve it, okay, this virtual inheritance, you can read more about this, this is out of scope for this question, but the answer here is the diamond problem, this problem is called as the diamond problem. Let us go to the next question. The next question is what will be the output of the given pseudo code if n is equal to 10? So let us see the pseudo code. The pseudo code goes like this. Read n, initialize i to 5 while i is less than n do increase sum by i, increment i and while write sum. Okay. So what is going to happen? Option A 35, Option B 25, Option C 45, Option D 55. So what is happening here? So as you can see, they have given that you will read n in this code. So they have given that n is equal to 10 will be passed. Let us track this code. Easy, right? Let us just track this code and uh, we will be able to solve this. So we will declare n and we will pass 10. 
initialize i to phi so you created a variable called i and you initialized it to phi while i is less than n so this is a while loop here so this is the looping code you need to know so while i is less than n so what is the value of i the i value is phi phi is less than n n is 10 so this is true the first time it became true so it will go here since it is true okay then it will go from here till here it will go back to condition checking increase sum by i so sum is a variable they didn't say that sum will be initialized with zero but let us understand that so increase sum by i what is the value of i phi so if you increase the value of sum by i that means you are assigning phi next increment i so you increment i to 6 next you go back you are checking 6 is less than 10 true so you come down increase sum by i so 5 plus 6 that is nothing but 11 come down increment i so this became 7 you go back and you check 7 is less than 10 true you come down increase sum by i so 11 plus 7 so 11 plus 7 nothing becomes this becomes 18 come down increment i this becomes 8 so you go back check the condition 8 is less than 10 condition is true come down increase sum by i 18 plus 8 is nothing but 26 you come down and increment i i becomes 9 go back and check the condition 9 is less than 10 true so come down increase sum by i so 26 plus 9 you get 35 increment i i becomes 10 so come here and check the condition 10 is less than 10 now the condition becomes false because 10 is equal to 10 so what happens it comes out and it says write sum what is the value of sum the value of sum is 35 that is given in option a so option a 35 is the answer for this given pseudo code very simple they have just given uh, a simple code a simple input and you have to answer it okay so that is it for this video we have come to the end of this uh, video so if there are more questions we'll upload another video regarding uh, you know these infosys examination and the question so you guys have to crack the examination and that is our intent so do check out our infosys cracker course do check out all other course for different tcf examinations etc are coming so i'll see you in the next video until then keep preparing